This video is going to describe one possible solution for Lesson 4 Practice Exercise B, uh, wherein you are reading the names of soccer teams in Buenos Aires and looking at their scores and then compiling um, a report about the top number of goals scored by each team over the course of this uh, time covered by this file. Um, in order to maintain all this information, it's helpful to use a dictionary, which is a way of storing information in the the computer's memory based on key value pairs. So the key in this case will be the name of the team and the value will be the maximum number of goals found for that team as we read the file line by line. Now this file is sort of like a comma separated value file although the delimiter in our case is a space. Um, the file does have a header which we'll use to pull out information. Um, the header is organized in terms of winner, winning goals, loser, losing goals, Although really there are some ties in here, so we might say uh, first score and second score rather than winner and loser. For our purposes, it doesn't matter who won or lost because the maximum number of goals might have come during a loss or a tie. So this solution is a little more complex than some of the other practice exercises. It involves a function, which you can see beginning in line 9, but I'm not going to describe this just yet. I'll wait until we get to that point where we need the logic that's in that function. So I'll start explaining this solution by going to line 23 where we import the Python CSV module. Now there's nothing in this script that uses ArcGIS um, or ArcPy geometries or anything like that so I don't import ArcPy at all. Um, but you will do it in Project 4 where you'll use a combination of the techniques used here along with ArcGIS geometries and really put everything together from, from both the practice exercises. Um, in line 26, uh, we set up a variable representing the path to that text file. And in line 27, we actually open the file. Uh, by default, it opens here in read mode. The read parameter is not specifically su supplied here. Um, in line 30, we create the CSV reader object. You should be familiar with this from the other examples in the lesson and the other practice exercise. Uh, the one thing that's different here is as a second parameter, we can specify the delimiter using this type of syntax, delimiter equals uh, and then a space. Um, this file does have a header, so in line 30 we'll read the header and then we figure out uh, the index positions of all of the columns in the file. That's what's going on in lines 33 through 36. Now we know that these are in the order 0, 1, 2, 3 in position, but um, writing it in this way where we use the header.index method makes the script a little more flexible in case the column order had been shifted around by somebody, which could easily happen if somebody had previously opened this file in a spreadsheet program and moved things around. In line 40, we're going to create a blank dictionary to keep track of each team and the maximum number of goals that they've scored. We'll refer to that dictionary frequently as we read through the file. In line 42, we begin a loop that actually starts reading the file row by row after the header. Um, and so lines 45 through 48 are pulling out those four pieces of information, basically the two team names and the number of goals that each scored. Uh, now when we get a team name and a number of goals, we need to check it against our dictionary to see if uh, the number of goals scored is greater than that team's uh, max. And uh, we need to do this check for both the winner and the loser, or in other words, the first team and the second team listed in the row. To avoid repeating code, uh, this is a good case for a function because we're going to use the same logic for both pieces. Why not write the code just once in a function? So in lines 51 and 54, you'll see that I'm invoking a function called check goals. And I pass in three things. I pass in the team name, I pass in the number of goals, and the dictionary. This function is defined up here in line 9. Um, so I've created a function called check goals and I create variables here for those three things that I know will be passed in uh, the team, the number of goals, and the dictionary. Line 11 performs a check to see if the team already has a key in the dictionary. If it does, then we need to look at the number of goals or max goals that have been recorded for the team and check it against the current score that we are reading um, to see if that maximum number of goals needs to be updated. So uh, in line 13 that check is occurring and if indeed the number of goals being read in the current line is greater than the, the maximum that we know about, 
Then in line 14, we update the maximum and set it equal to, to what we read within the line. Um, if the number of goals in the current line is not greater than our maximum, then we don't want to do anything. So that's what's in line 16, where it says pass. Uh, the pass uh, is just a keyword that means don't do anything here. Now, if the team uh, has never been read before and it doesn't have an entry in the dictionary for a maximum number of goals, then we're going to actually go down to line 19 and just set uh, the team. We're going to give the team a key in the dictionary and we're going to set its max goals to whatever we have now. Because in this case, we've only read one record for that team, so the maximum is, is the one value that we've read. Now, if this hasn't confused you yet, um, what we could do is put in a breakpoint and look at this in the debugger. And this will hopefully get help you to get a visual feel for what's going on in this dictionary. So I'm going to play this script up until the first time this function gets called. And over here, uh, I've set little watch watches on some of these variables, team, goals, and dictionary. So the first line in this file, um, you will see that uh, Boca scored two goals and Independiente scored one. Uh, so the first time we call this function, we're just going to pass in Boca as the team, two as the number of goals, and right now there's nothing in our dictionary. So what would you expect to happen uh, when you evaluated line 11? In our case, we're going down to uh, line 19 because the team does not have a key in the dictionary yet. So we're going to add a key for the team Boca and record uh, two goals for them in the dictionary. And you'll see that our dictionary has changed over here to where Boca has two. Um, now if we go ahead and play this again, um, the next one it's going to evaluate is Independiente with one. Again, because Independiente does not have a key in the dictionary, we expect this to go down to line 19. And indeed that's what happens if we play this out. Um, the next one is Rossing with one goal. And so as as we iterate through this, the first few times we're, we're heading down to line 19 just to add these keys. But as we get into uh, later runs of this, we'll start seeing the same teams over again. So here's a case, um, as we add a few more, where uh, in the current line, River has three goals. And in the dictionary, their maximum is two. So what would you expect to happen uh, when we evaluate line 11? In this case, uh, because River already has a key, we're going to go to line 13. And we'll check to see if goals, which is 3, is greater than their current maximum, which is 2. And indeed it is, so we invoke line 14. And watch carefully, the dictionary here performs the update when we go to the next line. So as you're working on project 4 and you're working with dictionaries in this manner, please keep the debugger open and watch what's happening. And you should be able to tell if your um, dictionary is being updated in the way that you expect. So to finish out this uh, script, uh, once we have our dictionary all built, then we're going to loop through it one last time and print each key and each value. And that can be done using a simple for loop like in line 57. Um, in this case, the variable key represents a key in the dictionary. And in line 58, we print out that key, and we print a colon and a space, and then we print the associated value for that key. If you want to pull a value out of a dictionary, you use square brackets and you pass in the key name. And so that's what we're doing there. Uh, so running this all the way through should produce a printout um, in your interactive window of the different teams as well as the maximum number of goals found for each.